This video has been brought to you by the Landscape Certified Contractors Association. Due to the membership support, we're able to bring content to each and every one of you. If you have a topic or a product you'd like us to review, or if you want to become a member, visit www.irrigatortech.com and hope to hear from you soon. Enjoy the video. Hi everyone, this is Brandon Burgess with the Irrigator Technical Training School. And, you know, in our classes, we, we cover all aspects of electrical troubleshooting and, and, and the problem that we get a lot of questions on and, and, and a lot of feedback on is battery operated units. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pretend that this is my valve that doesn't work and this is that we're in the field here. So I tech my solenoid, it passed the resistance test, I got a decent ohms reading. I use my Station Master Pro or my toner receiver checkmate and I got my solenoid to fire up and down. So I know that the valve's good. So my issue is with power. So we get, like again, we get that question a lot about the battery operated unit. So let's go ahead and go through the steps of using a battery operated unit. Okay, so this is my battery operated unit here. This is the Hydrorain 990. Every manufacturer use, makes these, you know, it, it's, it's a very, very popular, very common issue that we run into. So when I open up my box, I get the unit. Now this is the four station, so that's good. That means I can use four valves on this one unit. I got a solenoid too, so you might ask yourself, why do I get to have a solenoid? I already have a solenoid on the valve. Well, this is for AC current, which is alternating current, which is what we get from the clock, right? That's what we, we don't have in this situation, right? And this is what we're trying to alleviate this problem. Battery operated units, the word battery already sends a, you know, gets you thinking. Battery is DC. So this is what we call a DC latching solenoid. So the way a 24 volt AC solenoid works, power is sent to it from the controller, the plunger is then pulled up, the valve can function, power turns off, the solenoid goes down. So there's a constant current on this. A DC latching solenoid is different. Now it's like a switch, you can think of it as a switch. When the clock sends power to this DC uh, solenoid, it just clicks up. There's no holding of the voltage. So that's why our batteries will last a long time in this type of unit. So it'll latch on and then it comes off, it sends it like a switch and it switches off and the plunger goes down. So that's why we need to replace it. So if you run into that field, make sure that you have a DC latching solenoid, okay? Not all of the battery operated units come with these, okay? So I'll need to change that. So this is when we'll get into adapters. So in this case, I'm going to put this as an adapter to hook onto this Rainbird style valve. So this is one of the first things. And so also remember, if you're going to change a solenoid and take a solenoid off of a valve, make sure that you have the main line shut off at the meter, at the backflow, whatever you have, a gate valve, make sure you turn it off because if I pull this up, I'm going to get some seepage. If you're in a pinch, you could just turn down the and throttle down your your uh, flow control, but you know why risk it? Might as well do it right. And that's why we're here, right? To learn how to do the things right. So go ahead and take off your AC solenoid, okay? And just simply screw in your DC latching solenoid. it's nice and tight now we want to look so I have number one here pull the plunger out on this snap it in and basically I'm ready for business what I like about this model here is I can take out I can leave that hooked up I could take out this is what we do our programming on anything new we pull out the tab and then we'll just cycle through. Set our date. So we program this just like a standard clock. 
once everything's programmed, fully put it back in, close it up. A lot of these battery operated units, you would need to make sure that they seal properly, right? Just because they say it's waterproof, you have to do your due diligence and you have to make sure that it seals. This comes with a little holder here, which snaps in to the controller itself. Turn it around. Leave it like that. So now I got my valve ready to go. I have no AC power coming to it, doesn't matter. I change my solenoid, put a battery operated timer on here, and I'm ready to go. So that's the steps to putting in a battery operated unit.